if you think about it, there aren't as many women, I guess, in STEM jobs as there are men. It's, it's, there are women, obviously, but it's, it's very disproportional. And the question here is why? Some might say, oh, well, women are bad at math and sciences. Well, I say, fuck you. Because <laughs> there's a new study out that says it may have to do with just attitudes of being stereotyped as a nerd. And women, I guess, aren't into that. I guess not, you know? <laughs> I think for me it's super important to rebrand the word nerd, but I don't think we're there yet. You yeah. know, I'm all about owning the word nerd. I hope we're Obviously there Obviously you are too. <laughs> and, and I think that the more that we can, you know, talk about being a nerd like it's a good thing, mm -hmm. talk about taking ownership of nerd culture, the better. But I think that that's very much a youth vibe. I think it's a new movement that we're seeing. I don't think you see it in older generations. It wasn't cool when our parents were doing it. No, yeah. I don't even think it was cool when we were growing up in school. But I do think that now there's, I'm a little older than you are, Jack. Like no, because it's still, you know, if you think of the, the base of it, is it so bad to, to be intelligent? Is it so bad to have passionate interests in things? No, it's not. Not what at all. What am I going to be, boring and bored of life? That's yeah. not fun. That's, that's the opposite of cool. Rebranding. I completely agree. I completely <laughs> agree. But there's a, this is a really interesting study, and it's one of a multitude of studies, right? Mm -hmm. But this one is new, that kind of are trying to, to get to the root of why women are, like you said, uh, disproportionate in STEM jobs, so that science, technology, engineering, and math. Uh -huh. We're starting to see more and more women in science, but you also kind of see in the psychological sciences, the biological sciences, a little bit more in the chemical sciences, but definitely in physics, in engineering, and in mathematics, really underrepresented yeah. still. And, you know, why is that? Of course, uh, many people will say, and this is true, that academia is not really that conducive to being a mother, starting a family, there's a lot of problems there. Um, but also, it seems like this label is is important to women. Well, women see it as more negative, I guess, uh, according to the study from the University of Washington. They gave two articles to a group of men and women. One article uh, purported that the stereotype that nerds are um, socially inept and, and sit in dark rooms and, you know, aren't aren't desirable, I guess, mm. uh, was fake. And then, then another article said, no, those stereotypes are true. Uh, afterwards, the men weren't really affected, but the women felt that they didn't want to be tied to this negative nerd stereotype. Yeah. And that's what, was, I guess that's what's leading into it. So I would say from this, this study, it seems to indicate that it's, it's more of a, women just don't want to be called that. That's it. That's as, it's as simple as that. I mean, it's pretty interesting that it seems like that stereotype resonates so much more with women than with men. That, like you said, men weren't affected by um, being told one way or the other. They kind of had the same idea of what it means to be a computer scientist. There was another study that they did where they just basically asked people to describe a computer scientist. And mm -hmm. anybody who had never taken a computer science class was like, oh, computer scientists are like pasty and awkward and like on the spectrum. And girls who had taken at least one computer science class were less likely to say that. Mm -hmm. So, but, but men, there was no difference between the two, they whether care. they had taken it or not. They didn't really have a stereotype in their head of what a computer scientist is. And I mean, it's interesting. I wonder what the root of this is, you know? Would you go so far as to say that women uh, care more about perception of them? I don't know. I mean, I think, you know, there's also this thing of like, still the vast majority of individuals are heterosexual, right? Mm -hmm. So like about 90% of the population um, find themselves in straight relationships. So I wonder if perception of men as computer scientists is different for women versus men because women see men as sexual objects. That's interesting. You know, whereas men that. aren't thinking about that component. So for us to say like, oh, he's on the spectrum, he's super pale, he's like When not you say very on strong. the spectrum, do you mean like, like on the autistic Sheldon spectrum? Yeah, yeah, space. exactly. Okay. That's what I mean. That's what I assume. I'm weirdly a little bit attracted to that, but <laughs> <laughs> I think that most guys probably or most girls probably aren't. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I'm totally spitballing. Yeah. I'm not sure. But you I'm know, not saying that's bad by the way. I just don't care for <laughs> the Big Bang Theory as a show. But, but anyway. there are oh you don't. No. Oh. We could talk about that. What? Do you love it? No, I don't love it. You know, I think that the gender, I think there is a problem with gender roles in that I show. Think I think it may be a Chuck Lorre problem, too. Really? As opposed okay. to, a, you know, nerds are being portrayed badly, but I Chuck Lorre portrays women badly. Chuck Lorre portrays, like, a lot of stereotypical things. I think that's true. I think the stereotypes are strong in that. I think that over the seasons, uh, there's been at least an attempt to try mm -hmm. and r regulate that a little bit. I don't think it's gone as far as it needs to. But as far as really identifying with the culture of the show, I think it's huge. And I think it's really huge for doing what we were mentioning earlier, mm -hmm. which is kind of celebrating nerd culture. So even with the bad 
in in tow it's the ends maybe I think the net the result is still positive okay. but some people disagree with me but but going back to yeah, um, sorry. to women no, no no of course <laughs> going back to women in STEM there is a really uh, actually it's not just one study now there's been hundreds of studies like this that show this is really effed up that if um, if you give a girl a math test for example and you tell her generally speaking boys and girls do the same on this test she takes the test she's usually gonna do really well. You give a girl a math test and you tell her, generally speaking, boys do a lot better than girls on this test, so don't worry if your scores are kind of low. She'll do significantly I've worse than the average that. guy. And so it seems like still a lot of this comes down to social perception. Mm -hmm. A lot of it comes down to expectations, something that in psychology is called stereotype threat, which is if you feel like you're constantly under threat of being stereotyped, you're going to feel stereotyped, oh, no. yeah. yeah, which is really tough. And so I think maybe this idea of computer scientists are huge nerds and I really desperately don't wanna be viewed as a huge nerd comes down to that stereotype threat. So again, we gotta rebrand so nerds. So are we priming ourselves for, for failure? I think much. so, I think so a lot of times. And of course, I don't think the locus you know, falls on women, falls on men, whatever. It's very difficult to say like who's to blame for this phenomenon, but it is important that we're studying what this phenomenon is because we gotta figure out how to change it. Mm -hmm. You remember the big UK campaign that, um, uh, everybody called it the Katy, uh, I remember going on uh, Attack of the Show and Chris Hardwick called it the Katy Perry video for science. Oh, science. It's a girl thing. Do you remember that video? It's really bad. Look I it up. <laughs> yeah. Was it like a, a PSA kind yeah, of thing? Yeah, and they were all in the lab in their high heels. Science, it's a girl thing. And everybody's pissed. You know, there were so many blogs from kind of feminist scientists. My friend, you know, a lot of people were like, this is terrible, this is bad stereotyping. I didn't really have that much of a problem with it. And I think it's because there is a sect of women who find themselves to be really girly. They want to take ownership of that kind of, I'm, I'm a girly girl, and I think science should be for me too. Yeah. You know, I, mean, I, don't, well, I don't think feminism, well not feminism, being fem feminine is necessarily the same as being weak. Not at but all. It just, it's sometimes perceived that way, and there's a, there's a lot of conflicting, like ideally we would like things to be this way, but realistically things are this way in society, and they kind of conflict with each other. And it's not like something is fundamentally male about mm -hmm. doing science. It's not like you can't, you know, be a girl. My vagina is stopping me from doing this experiment. <laughs> so yeah, I think, you know, it takes all types and I think we need to be, be appealing to all types of girls because just like scientists aren't monolithic, here the study is telling you computer scientists aren't monolithic, women aren't monolithic either. I'm a little more of a tomboy, I get that, but I have plenty of friends in the sciences mm -hmm. who have amazing shoe collections <laughs> and wear makeup to the lab every single day.